You are now entering Night Storm Nation. All I have to say is this. Child of if you are one of those people divorced, that have been put down all of your life, infidelity, beat up and trapped in a pit of woe, depression, it is time for you to stand up with the Night Storm Nation because we are going anywhere. I'm YG Nightstorm, the man not afraid to be transparent As I help real people with real issues And my co-host is my queen My stunningly, stunningly, hurtfully pretty wife Come on, baby, woo! Good morning, ATL and everyone across the world This is Nightstorm Radio Radio gone real because we are you And I am Toby George Nightstorm The woman not afraid to tell the truth about things as they really are Uh Uh-huh yeah, and you my baby. Oh, you okay, also yeah. look good today. I mean, you look good every day, baby, but you look really good today. Oh, you like my hair? I like your hair, oh, so it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if <laughs> Night Storm Nation, if you're in the ATL, feel free to call in at 404 355 8699. And to all the Night Storm Nation members around the country, you call in at 1 866 923 2860. You can also find out more about us, the Night Storms, at Night Storm. Com. That's N Y G H T S T O R M dot com. And you can also listen to our show from the website as well on the talk radio page, as well as love860.com and here at love860. Yes, right. And all you smartphone owners out there, let me remind you once again mm-hmm. download iHeartRadio, uh-huh. tune in radio, iRadio uh-huh. now. Uh huh. There's no excuse. Oh, I can't hear you clearly on my radio. Or I'm not by computer right Mm -hmm, now. mm -hmm. Well, sweetie, pull that phone out your pocket or Mm -hmm. out of your purse. Go to iHeartRadio or iTunes Radio or Tune in now. I'm sorry, not iTunes Radio. I Radio now. Uh huh. Our Tune in now. Yeah. Go into the talk radio section. Go there. Look for W A E C Love 860 AM. Look for that. Favorite it. Favorite it. And listen to us every Thursday from 11 to noon. And I'm telling y'all once again, Night Storm Nation, we got a lot of folks who doing exactly what the queens say. And they are having some similarities as me. When we listen to you, we have a good life. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to the oh, queen, y'all. Good karma, good karma. Happy wife, happy life, boy. It lived real good in the Night Storm yeah, household. All right, so, too funny. All right, so baby, hmm? a lot of stuff going on in the world. All right. What's on top for the day, baby? Well, we're going to be talking about how to find the smallest sliver of a silver lining Uh in some very dark clouds today. As we all know, today is September the 11th, Mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking about what this day really means to us and where we are as a country 13 years after that tragedy of 9-11. But we first want to talk about Miss Joan Rivers. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, Joan Rivers did pass away uh, recently, and we put up a blog on Nightstorm.com on why Joan Rivers matters. And a lot of the Nightstorm Nation members said, we would like for you to read the blog on the show. So Nightstorm Nation members, this is why Joan Rivers matters. It's from nightstorm.com, and here it goes. It's, it's funny how a person can live 81 years, be in the limelight of Hollywood for half a century, and manage to upset half of the country with her jokes while bringing joy to certain fringe groups in politics about her tongue-in-cheek comments about the First Lady of the United States. It takes quite a unique individual to be able to pull this off. And that person was the legendary Joan Rivers. We are not going to focus on how this powerful empress of comedy died, but we are but we are going to focus on her life and how she impacted a male dominated culture and found a way to thrive. Now, Joan Alexandra Molinsky changed her last name to Rivers for the sake of show business and immediately made an impact in the American TV culture in 1965 as a guest on The the Tonight Show hosted by Johnny Carson. Now, using her self-deprecation of her numerous plastic surgeries, we all remember that, and making fun of celebrities, which she did all the time, she impressed network executives so much that she was the first woman to host her own late night talk show and later went on to host her own daytime show. Now, the Joan Rivers show was featured on TV from 1989 to 1993. 
Now, regardless of winning a daytime Emmy for Outstanding Talk Show host, she tended to offend a lot of her colleagues for her outspoken commentary and stirred up controversy as Johnny Carson himself never spoke another word to her even up to his dying day. Now, her latest joke that may have gone too far was saying that President Obama is a closeted homosexual and his wife, Michelle Obama, was actually born a man. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Now, some people looked at this as dry humor, but quite naturally, others were very offended. This was not the first time she had unflattering words about the Obamas. She also said that whenever she did pass away, she did not want them to attend her funeral. And during an appearance on the Howard Stern show, Rivers said boldly, we used to have Jackie O, now we got Blackie O in the office. Now that's deep. Now let's continue. I will be honest and say that I do find some of her statements very offensive. I try to tell myself that she was a comedian. And most folks in comedy say things to intentionally troll the people. It is a classic technique for the performer to stay relevant and keep people gossiping about them. Now, whether these statements were off the cuff or her true feeling is irrelevant right now. She has passed from this world and she did make a difference. She was one of those pioneers that occasionally and actually helped open the door for female TV personalities film stars, and radio talk show hosts by letting the world know that a woman can be just as entertaining as a man. One thing is for sure, though, she will always be remembered, and if that was her goal all along, she actually succeeded. All right, now that is from Why Joan Rivers Matters, and that's on nightstorm.com. So, what do you think, baby? I think that everybody mm -hmm. has their way. Like Miley Cyrus is out doing everything she possibly can to get attention. Right. To, in their way, feel relevant. Yeah. You know, I don't agree with everything. Some mm -hmm. things were funny. A lot of things were not. Yeah. But this is the passing of another soul. Yeah. So may she rest in peace. May she rest in peace. Now, let's get to our Night Storm letters. Yeah. And if you want to write us, send us your letters to the Night Storms at nightstorm.com. And if your letter fits the topic, we will read it out on air to if it um, addresses the issue that we're discussing. We'll right, read right, it on right, air. right, right. Uh-huh. Now, let's get to this first one. Go ahead, baby. <clears throat> it goes, Dear Night Storms, I'm a military veteran, and I'm proud to say that I served this country with honor. But I will be honest, when I say that I do not think President Obama is doing a good job on tracking down the terrorist cell named ISIS, these people are killing Americans. He's just sitting on his hands and openly said that we don't have a strategy of attack. I am not a right-wing nut that hates the president because he is black or any of that foolishness. But I want something done. As a soldier, I followed the orders of President Bush without question in the Iraq war. There was tension in our squad because some of us wonder if we were attacking the actual folks that attacked us, that attacked us on 9-11. Hindsight is 2020, and I must admit that we were wrong and Bush was also wrong. Putting politics aside, we suffered tragic losses, and mm -hmm. I just want our country strong again. I feel that Bush and Obama are out of touch with the pain of the American people because they are nice and safe in their ivory towers. I know you guys have suffered great loss in your family when your son died. How do you feel about the state of our union, and how can we heal? Paul in Tampa. Okay, Paul, thank you for your letter. And we're going to address this, and I like the fact, uh, for one, thank you for your service. Yes, you know, definitely. and and since this is September 11th, and um, this is 13 years after the tragedy that happened, and what Paul is saying now, he he's connecting what happened in 2001 with what's happening now with this ISIS situation that's going on overseas. And Nightstorm Nation, we have seen some of these brutal videos and about. Uh, people being killed Our journalists and journalists being, being beheaded. killed, beheaded mm -hmm. and all of this stuff, you know, and, over religion and philosophy mm -hmm. and power. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's how a lot of people die in this world mm -hmm. through religion, philosophy and power. 
because we want folks to do what we want them to do or somebody that did something to us. And now we're going to take all of our frustration out on someone that had absolutely nothing to do with, with the initial on. confrontation. Mm-hmm. OK. And a lot of this ISIS stuff is very disturbing. And I don't and I'm going to say this. I don't blame President Obama for saying we don't have a strategy because as the president, he's not going to openly tell the world their strategy on we're going to at 3 a.m. attack this place over here with some drones. He's not going to say that. Mm-hmm. If anything, he's going to say, well, you know, we're still working on it. Mm-hmm. That's the political thing to say. And as far as what has happened in, on 9-11 in 2001, it was very, very tragic. And Paul is saying that we we probably was messing with the wrong folks in Iraq, and he regrets the war. He regrets all of it because of all that tragic loss, but he wants our country to be strong. So, sweetheart, how are you feeling where we are now, 13 years later to the day on the towers falling and this country changing forever? Well, I mean, you look at how much— progress and you question how much progress was made mm-hmm. through it all with the war in Iraq, with the attack on the Twin Towers yeah. and the Pentagon and the people that lives. And honestly, there have been some movement forward, but very little, mm-hmm. in my opinion, right. in the snail space. We still have people over there, and now we're discussing going back to have another war. Mm-hmm. So... All I can say is I'm just glad I'm not the president. Mm -hmm. I've never had a desire to be the president. Because if you notice, they go in all young. Man. Harold's black. Man. They playing saxophones. Man. (laughs) You know, and then they come out. Eight years later looking old as dirt, man. Oh, my God. Hair is white, (laughs) wrinkled, and the smile is weary. Yeah. It's, It's a lot. To put on a lot of person on one person, and you have to make decisions for not only it's like you as the head of the household, you got to make decisions for our house, mm-hmm. but then you're also responsible for making decisions over here, across town, mm-hmm. across the state lines, and everywhere in the world, and that's a lot to shoulder. Yeah. When Obama was first coming into office. When he was the president elect and he sat down with George Bush and he had all these great plans on I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and we're going to change this. And, you know, because you can see everything that's wrong from the outside. Yeah. But Bush just looked at him and he said, wait till you in here. Yeah. Wait till. Just wait, buddy. You're sitting in the seat and you have the people in your face and you have the decisions to make. And I know with every president that comes into office, you have people that disagree with you know, their policy mm-hmm. and the way that they're handling things. And you have people that are rallying behind them saying, if you were in their position, what would you do? What decisions would you make? And it's just a tough road to hoe. Yeah, especially once you start learning everything Yeah, getting involved. out into them classified files that yeah. the the public in general will we never will know. We will never know. We will never exactly. know this stuff. And, you know, and I tell people all the time, man, you know, being the president of the United States, I don't care if you're, you know, from a red state or a blue state, Democrat, Republican, independent. Once you step and sit in that seat and you are walking in those shoes— Every decision that you make will be scrutinized. Half mm-hmm. of the country will hate you. Mm-hmm. Half of the country. If not more than half at if times. If not more at times, your supporters will turn on you, mm-hmm. you know, and the people who hate you will just hate you more. Exactly. Okay. So it's not a very easy thing. But one thing that I noticed what Paul said, and we're talking about finding silver linings in dark clouds. Mm-hmm. Paul said, you know, some. I don't agree with either one of these guys, Mm -hmm. okay? And a lot of folks in this country are starting to come together, Democrat and Republican, hard-nosed, ultra-conservative, and hard-nosed, ultra-liberal are coming together and saying, look, we are honestly tired of seeing our young men and women getting killed in wars that have absolutely nothing to do with what happened. Mm -hmm. We have people coming together, wanting to save lives, pulling putting politics aside Mm -hmm. and saying we are still brothers in this country. We are still sisters in this country. Mm -hmm. And if we want this country, Paul, to be strong again, it's going to take the American people to galvanize together and say, look, 
We're sick and tired of the nonsense. We will stand together. We will fight our enemies, but we will also stand together with the injustices in our own country, whether it's a Michael Brown being shot or any other person being victimized, regardless of gender, regardless of color, regardless of age, justice for all and justice right now. It's a lot of people, sweetheart. There so is. that's a silver lining right there. There is. Mm-hmm. We want to take a moment, though, to just have a moment of silence for those that lost their lives. Some being crushed by falling buildings. Some on the planes as they impacted the buildings. Mm-hmm. Some who had to jump out of windows to their deaths as opposed to being burned. All the children that are lost um, at loss of their parents, their father or mother, all the spouses that were lost mm-hmm. in memory of everyone. We just want to take a moment of silence. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Now we coming up with a hard break. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Night Storm Nation, we send all of our love and hearts to you, especially if you have been affected by the tragedies of this day. Mm -hmm. If you got loved ones who unfortunately perished, people who have been hurt and still suffering Mm -hmm. from this tragedy. Mm -hmm. And because 9-11 just wasn't one day. This was something when it hit, it it effectively changed the lives of everybody forever. And if you are continuing to walk in your pain, we pray that you find some kind of way of dealing with that pain constructively, especially having this stuff being put back in your face today Mm -hmm. and seeing those towers fall, seeing the fear grip the city, seeing the fear grip the country, and wondering what the hell is going on in this world. Mm -hmm. So Night Storm Nation, we love you, and we are going to be here for you. But we're going to take a quick break. Let's get ourselves together. And we are going to bring in a spectacular guest that can help us find the silver lining through all of this mess and help us feel good with some good old fashioned humor that can take care of a whole lot of ills. Am I right, baby? That is right. Yeah, so you are listening to Nod Storm Radio right here on Love 860 WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational talk radio station. See you on the other side of the break. You ever been so depressed to where you want to hurt yourself because life has been unkind, unfair, and unforgivable? Folks done hurt you and thrown you away? Yeah, I know. Because I was there too. Until I read this book by YG Nightstorm called All Action No Talk. This dude has been there, man. He understands us. He was homeless, abused as a child, abandoned by his dad, and even his oldest son passed away. I'm encouraged because if this dude can make it, so can I, and so can you. So check it out at nightstorm.com, N-Y-G-H-T-S-T-O-R-M, and know that you have the strength to change your life despite adversity, like him, (laughs) like me, like you. You, guy or gal that's listening, are you enjoying the night storms? Good! If you want the 411 on me, YG Nightstorm, and me, Toby George Nightstorm, aka Lady Nightstorm, visit nightstorm.com. That's N Y G H T S T O R M.com. Check out our informative blogs, videos, and see what Nightstorm Nation is doing to benefit the community. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks again for listening to the Night Storms on Nightstorm Radio every Thursday at 11 a.m. to noon on Love 860 a.m. Atlanta's inspirational station. We, we are you. you. 
Hi everyone, it's me, Lady Nightstorm, and have I got news for you. Want to know how to keep up with us and what we're doing in the community? It's easy. Just like us on Facebook at Nightstorm Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Nightstorm Radio. And become part of the Nightstorm Nation mailing list at Nightstorm.com. That's N-Y-G-H-T-S-T-O-R-M. Keep up with all our promotions, contests, and latest happenings. Nightstorm Radio. We are you. You are now rocking with the Night Storms on Atlanta's inspirational station. Love 860 AM WAEC. Now back to the show. Welcome back to yeah. Night Storm Radio. We're talking about finding the silver lining mm-hmm. in some of the darkest times or times of, um, in not indecision, but... Yeah. Well, you don't know what's going to happen next. I can't you just think. don't it know, just man. The word came in my mind and out See, my this is a dog moment right here, I know, man. Right? I'm you got to find that silver, silver lining, baby. Uncertainty. Yeah. There it yeah. is. Wow, I'm there getting is. freaking old, my story. No, she <laughs> ain't old. And I'm, I'm with it. No, baby, you just getting better like that fine wine, sweetheart. Well, the wine forgot a couple of ingredients just then. I ain't saying <laughs> nothing. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in times of uncertainty and uh-huh. we don't know what's going to happen next, right. we need to find the silver lining. So we got a letter, YG. Yeah. Would you like to get into that? All right, let's get into our night storm letter, the second one. It said, Dear Night Storms, I love the energy you guys have on the radio and you guys are not afraid to talk about sensitive issues. Well, thank you. But I'm something in my life that I need a little help on. I read your blogs, all, I read your blogs all the time, and I am truly inspired. I've always wanted to be a writer, and now I am finally taking the plunge. Mm. I quit my job. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> that I quit my job in the healthcare field and started focusing on my writing full time. My husband says Look how you say his. that I'm nuts. To leave a good paying job to pursue my dream. Shovel in paradise. He just doesn't understand my passion as he complains about him paying all of our bills solo. Mm. It's hard for us. But YG, calling me out. Could you please tell him to support me like you support Toby and tell him to just man up. And let me pursue my dreams regardless of the cost. Mm-hmm. That is Lindsay from Dallas. Now, mm-hmm. Lindsay, mm-hmm. Lindsay. I feel the heat under your behind, YG. <laughs> Lindsay, sweetheart. Okay. Okay, I'm going I'm to address this, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, I'm not going to go off on your husband. And, and, okay, I'm glad be- she didn't tell me to address be- this. Be- because times, times are hard, Lindsay. And people losing jobs left and right because the recession is still creeping along. And, and sweetheart, you, 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 you quit your job. Okay. And I'm sure there's a mortgage and whatever y'all got going on and your husband is tripping. Mm-hmm. But, sweetie, being a writer hard. It's hard. And it's just like trying to get into the music business or entertainment, period. You got to keep your day job until you make it. And I like your passion. Mm-hmm. But, sweetie... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically what YG is saying is oh, maybe you want to reconsider seeing if you can come back on at least a part-time basis. Call your boss. Because what what you're doing is <laughs> I understand your passion. Yeah. I write. My mm-hmm. husband writes. But, you know, when the mics turn off, we still got to get out there and hustle to make sure we feed these children and keep a roof over their heads. Yeah. So the weekend is a great time to write. Yeah. In the evening, mm-hmm. you can jot thoughts down. Uh huh. You can use your recorder on your uh, on your phone uh-huh. to you know speak thoughts that you have as they pop into your mind. Yeah. But you have got to maintain life until something else presents itself, and then you can you know put down one plate. For the other. Yeah, speaking of place, writers be starving just like artists. I'm just saying. All right, but it's good that we are experts on this field. Yes. But it's also refreshing that we have other experts as well. So, Jared, in my famous British accent, and I know you love it, and the Queen loves it, Nightstorm Nation loves it, if you can cue that music, please, so we can introduce our guests properly. Ha-ha! 
Yeah! Nod Storm Nation, our distinguished guest is here taking away my queen. Go! He's a new author uh-huh. based right here in the ATL. Yeah. He's one of the new kids on the block who is bringing a fresh perspective about everyday life to the written page. His debut novel, Out of Work, holds in on the humor in real life, on the job circumstances. This labor of love was born out of his belief that he can find the funny in almost any situation. So, ladies and gentlemen of Night Storm Nation, it is our honor, privilege, and pleasure to welcome to Night Storm Radio, Mr. Chris Henry. Yeah. Welcome to the studio, Chris. He in the Thank building. He is in the building. So how you doing, dog? I'm good. How you, how you guys doing? We having fun here, man. You okay. see, you see how we cut up in the studio, right? I see that. I see that. I see that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I gotta ask you this. I gotta ask you this because you you didn't heard what? Um, yeah, she quit a job. Well, Lindsay to say it now. Um, but let's let's talk about this. How long have you been writing? And what was the moment in your life when you knew that this is like what you wanted to do? About four years now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I started back, honestly, back in 2003 mm-hmm. and four, and I put it off. Mm-hmm. I had moved to New York in 07. And um, before I moved in 07 and 06, I got some comp cards down and started writing my notes yep. on what kind of, you know, the lines and the character and stuff. Mm-hmm. Which it was a mystery book called April's Promise. Okay. So, um, but I, I moved in 07 New York, came back in 09. So I put it to, to the side. I came back to Atlanta. And uh, I was working here and there on jobs. So I started back on April Promise, and I finished it. Mm-hmm. But as I'm, when I finished it, I started another job. It was a warehouse job. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of, I got the the idea out of work, my book now, from that warehouse job. Or mm-hmm. just any warehouse job I've been on, you know. Um, so I put a, a, the mystery book aside and then started out of work, you know. So uh which I was out of work when I was writing. <laughs> so was, I had time. A, a lot of writers are out of work. I had time. <laughs> I had time. Now, I'm not saying I was looking for a job, but uh-huh. I had time to write, yeah. you know. And um, so, I, I mean, I know I spent like 12 hours a day writing. Mm. Sometime 8 o'clock in the morning. I'd be, I'd be from like 10 o'clock at night to, to 8 in the morning just writing. You know what I mean? I so that sounds, sounds familiar. So <laughs> so familiar. Yeah, it's very common for me to turn over in the bed and see my husband across the room at the computer at whatever o'clock in the morning. I'm Typing like, away, oh. hey, you, I'm hey. turning back over and going yeah. back to sleep. And then when I finally go to sleep, I'm here. <laughs> Baby, what you doing? I'm writing in there. <laughs> yeah, because I, I get up at people hours. <laughs> All right. Now, all our aspiring writers out there, I don't think we gave the number when we came back. 404-355-8699 or 866-923-2860 if you'd like to call in and get in on this conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know how the economy tanked in late 2007, Mm -hmm. and a lot of people were all of a sudden jobless. Now, people who were used to living certain lifestyles were hit with new culture shock. That being said... What inspired you to write a book entitled Out oh. of Work? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I was like I said, I was out of work, but I was working at this company. Mm-hmm. And um, I know I was going on break and I saw people, you know, on break, people run to the time clock and they just in line and you know, you only got thirty minutes to get back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's it's seeing that over the years and seeing how people work these companies and the soup and the managers there that you got to work with, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's kind of, it, it's comical mm-hmm. to me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So as I'm going on break, I said, this can be a book, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I started that day. I went back, I, I went home that night, and I started writing. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, I, I didn't look back. You know what I mean? I, I started, and I know when I was doing it, I used to call my mom over. Mm-hmm. Like I say something, I make up a line. And I called over, and she'd come over and listen to what I have to say. Mm-hmm. And she, and she, you know, start laughing. And she said, "Chris, she said it sounded like something that, you know, you you're hearing on Sanford and Son. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, because uh, I was a dead, I was a dead heart 
Mm-hmm. Fan of, of Red Fox, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So back in the day, and Richard Pryor, you know what I mean. So the timing of of of, of the the you know the conversations and mm-hmm. back and forth. But uh, yeah, and I was out of work, and I was looking. I have an IT degree mm-hmm. in computer science, and I have a job now. Um, I published my book in December mm-hmm. of last last year, and I republished it back in January. But I had just got hired in December, mm-hmm. and um, I'm working full time now. But wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, so wait a minute, because I want to focus back on what Lindsay and Dallas said. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got a job because you do have an IT degree, right? Okay, right. and I think you you got that from the the awesome University of Phoenix, of Phoenix, right? Correct. Yes, yes, right. great, great, great school. You know, sponsor, great, great, great school. <laughs> okay, um, but you th- <laughs> you know I tell you we cut up, man. All right, but you said you know you you were out of work for a while, right? And I worked at those warehouse jobs. You remember when I worked mm-hmm. at those warehouse jobs, right? And you do see some see. comical stuff. You do, but you even though you're writing, you still got a job, right? Okay, so can you say something to Lindsay right quick, please? Yeah, I mean, is is you have to, you know, you have plenty of time to write. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. A job, it can, people say if I get a full-time job, it'll slow me down, but that's not the case. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of hours out throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, once you leave home, mm-hmm. I mean, go home from work, start writing. And if you have kids, you got to, you know, do something with the kids, whatever. They got, you know, games or football or basketball, whatever. You know, just take like 30 minutes out your day, mm-hmm. you know, because if you're consistent and you're taking like 30 hours just writing and typing, mm-hmm. it adds up. Mm-hmm. You know, and they had this great program called Dragon. <laughs> cheater! That you You're could just sit and talk. You are such a cheater! <laughs> really? No, yeah. That you could just sit and talk. And it'll type what you're saying. So, you know, as I was saying earlier, if you're in the car and you decide you want to put it on your, you know, recording device on your right. phone, and then you can just come home and play that sucker <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the microphone. They'll type it out. Then you can edit and do whatever you want to do. So, they, um, yeah, they sell that. You can get that at See, Best she Buy. See, that while what? she's stuck in traffic, right, Chris? Okay. okay. Now, me, we old school. Yeah, you like this. Okay, <laughs> we old school. I said to go back and edit. I touch it then. I know, but baby, you so twenty first century. Okay, <laughs> and see the the, 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 the core value. Right. Come on, Chris. Now, right. the core value of the the writing art form is when you get your fingers and you don't. Write but you're, you're pecking on the keyboard <laughs> and then you hit backspace, oh, Lord. backspace. Is this a Stephen J. Canal? Yes. <laughs> that's all I see now. That, that, that's, that's when you're going through the trenches I of the writing Didn't process. did you just say when you wake up, you hear me typing? So I do that also. But I'm just saying, it uh-huh. helps you along the way. But see, I don't cheat with. No, Chris, let me ask you something. We oh, as he talk. turns his We're back. We're going to turn our back on the queen uh-huh. right quick uh-huh. before she throws something at me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there's a lot of some water bottles and stuff on this table while you're <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you he can't goes. treat me like up here like you do me at home. Uh, you got witnesses. Uh, now stop it. Now witnesses. I don't care about no witnesses. <laughs> anyway, Chris. Now when you are writing, and I want to, like I said, I want to take this out to Lindsay so she can really understand okay. how it is to be a writer. When you are writing, and you do find your time out of your incredibly busy schedule, you right. know what is the the best part? Of writing to you that really just affects you in your core, like when you type in old school. Mm-hmm. Um, different ideas, you know. Um, I can, I can write, and I cut my computer off at nine o'clock, mm-hmm. and I can, you know, get ready for bed. Eleven thirty, I, I might think of something, mm-hmm. and instead of waiting for that morning, I would go back and cut my computer on, mm-hmm. and I would type it out. You know, I will change a whole conversation with these two characters. You know, if the, if it didn't flow right in mm-hmm. my mind, I said, let me go back and change the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just the art form and the and the grinding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not really, you know, giving up. And because I know writer's block, I didn't really t- I didn't too much have it. Mm-hmm. I didn't too much have it because I had it. fun with it. Mm-hmm. You know, you get, you get it as far as how, you know the publishing part of it mm-hmm. or how I'm gonna. Go, um, Get the you know marketing thing out there, whatever I do it. But as far as like writing part, mm-hmm. I never really had a writer's block. So give us an excerpt, just something off the top of your head that people would find in your book. A little funny, little yeah, out of work, little story. Like Chris Henry, uh huh. For me or the book? Yeah, from yeah, from what you have on there. 
Um, well, the guy, the main character, Lionel, mm-hmm. he's a supervisor. Mm-hmm. So he get promoted to plant manager. So uh, he's a brother. And uh, they they moved him to a new warehouse. Out in, it's based in L.A., whatever. Mm-hmm. So he, he get these new employees who who just got – Warehouse, mm-hmm. this new. Uh, they got hired from like they got fired. First of all, they were like doctors, lawyers, pilots, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they come, they downgrade. You know the economy. You got to downgrade. Right, you know? right. You know some people, if you you, you make money, you, you know you got to take anything to pay bills. Mm-hmm. So, but they working for this guy Lionel. Mm-hmm. He come in, you know, with his bullhorn, first day telling people to setting down the rules. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they looking like you know this idiot crazy. You know? <laughs> 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 you know, he, he didn't, you know, he tried to cut no breaks all day, just work throughout the whole day. Really? Yeah, you know, but he give him a break, though. Yeah, he, I mean, legally, legally you, gotta, you, you got, got to, to get, you got to, you got to get a break, but, uh-huh. you know, he's just over the top, you know. So, the first day on the job, or the second day, one of the, the characters in there uh, went to another employee, and they came t- together to get a union in there. Uh-oh. Yeah, Uh-oh. yeah. They try to get Lionel and the rest of the, of the bad boys out of there. Just mm-hmm. to change the whole feel of it. So um, the company ended up getting sold. Okay, and he, he ended up getting demoted. Oh, okay. So wait a minute. Hold on now. So Lionel, this dude, you know, he done got promoted, right? Right. You know, because we've known characters like this. Like you said, you worked in the warehouse. I worked in the warehouse. Just in the workplace. Period. Right. Dude get promoted. Okay. Now he's starting to smell himself a little bit. A little bit. Okay, and he come, he just and he come down hard on his employees, and then all of a sudden, drama happens. Mm-hmm. The company gets sold, and he get knocked off the cloud. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, he getting treated like mud. So you know, it's it's uh, it's real life stuff though. It mm-hmm. happens every day. You know, these uh, high tech you know managers, you know CEOs of companies, you know they. Like, I work for Carter's. I, mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway. I work for a big-time company, mm-hmm. but I'm a contractor. Yeah, I'm a which temp. is a it's great like, company. It's a great company. Awesome right? company. <laughs> it's awesome company. Right. Incredible work right. ethic. Right. Yes. Right. right. So, uh, but other companies. Yeah, other, other folk. Com- other folk. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Doesn't, you know, have the, the right values of the company I work for. Mm-hmm. And you know. it's always great when the company cares about their people. Right. And you're not just a number. You're not just there to make them money. And if you don't like what we say, oh, well, bye. I can get somebody else who can make me some money. Right. <laughs> it don't matter. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, it's definitely hard to find that silver lining sometimes. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, uh, man, all I know is, Lindsay, go get your job back, sister. Because it's hard out here. It's hard to get a job. And the right. folks out there who work in those warehouse jobs mm-hmm. and work in those, you know, nine to five jobs, it ain't what you want, but it's supplying a need mm-hmm. for right now. Stay there, bust your butt, get up in the middle of the night, right? And get yourself together. Am I right, my queen? Absolutely right. right. All right. You are listening to Night Star Radio here on Love 860 AM. We're going to break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Event planners, are you worried that your next corporate get together is going to be boring? Then invite the Night Star to speak at your next event and electrify your organization as we break down how to grow your business, fix broken relationships, and conquer life challenges. So make your next event epic. Invite me and the Queen to rock the house with inspirational techniques designed to empower individuals and maximize their true potential. And thanks for listening to Night Storm Radio on Love 860 AM WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational station. We are you. This is Toby George Nightstorm, a.k.a. Lady Nightstorm, and I'm known as the woman not afraid to tell the truth about how things really are. And the truth I have to say to you is you should listen to Nightstorm Radio every Thursday from 11 to noon. And you should also like us on Facebook at Nightstorm Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Nightstorm Radio. And join the Nightstorm Nation mailing list on Nightstorm.com. 
That's N Y G H T S T O R M dot com. Night Star Radio on Love 860 AM WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational talk radio station. We are you. This is YG Nightstorm. And why should you listen to Nightstorm Radio? Because we relate to you or someone you know with topics taken directly from our lives. Every time you tune in, you'll hear a discussion about real subjects that affect real life. Why? Because me and the Queen have been there. So join us right here every Thursday morning from 11 to noon on Love 860 AM WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational talk radio station, Night Storm Radio. We are you. Hello, Nightstorm Nation. This is Toby George Nightstorm, a.k.a. Lady Nightstorm, and I have a question for you. How much are you spending each day on lunch? Six, seven, ten dollars even? Do you know that for less than what you spend each week on lunch, you can advertise your business or service right here during the show on Nightstorm Radio? Why don't you inbox us on Facebook, send us a message on Twitter, or drop us a line at nightstorm.com. Let us show you how you can get your business or service out in front of the people. Now back to the show. Welcome back to Night Storm Radio. We are speaking with author extraordinaire, Mr. Chris Henry, about his uncanny ability to pull humor out of the jaws of adversity and his wonderful book, Out of Work. Now, if you would like to call in and be a part of the conversation, you can reach us at 404-355-8699 in the ATL and all the Night Storm Nation members around the country, 1-866-923-2860. But most of y'all just send us y'all letters and say, hey, YG, ask him this. Hey, YG, oh, ask him that. Are these things that pop up on Twitter? Yeah, y- y'all scared to talk to the man. He ain't going to bite you. But we had <laughs> another pop-up letter that did come up. And we're going to get into this. So, you ready, Chris? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so, dear Night Storms, just want to say what's up, and my whole crew enjoys the show. Toby is very elegant and beautiful, and YG, I'm sorry, bro, but you look like the black Incredible Hulk. Really? Yes. <laughs> Dude, really? Okay. <laughs> well, that's what the kids call them, Black Hulk. Okay. We see your workout videos on YouTube benching four or 500 pounds and just feel sorry for any dude that crosses your path. This ain't got nothing to do with the, with the show today. Anyway, the point of my letter is this. I'm listening to all of you guys talk about being writers. Okay. I want to write about my life, but I hear that being an author is really tough, especially if you're an unknown. So... How long will it take for me to make it to the big time so I can have a big house and a beautiful queen of my own? Lance from Minneapolis. Lance, dog. First off, I don't look like the Incredible Hulk, man. I'm sorry, man. What, what, baby? I didn't say, of course you don't look like, but I mean, he's talking about, you know what he's talking about. I ain't stunned, Lance, man. Bro, <laughs> I ain't stunned you, man. Anyway, but we're going to address your question, okay? And I, I don't go around just bench pressing 500 pounds all the time. That stuff heavy, man. It hurts my back, man. I mean, I'm a human being. And yes, the queen is beautiful. So thank you, sir. But anyway, to your point, and we got Chris in here smiling. Mm-hmm. Um. Because we don't know how to act. Uh, but anyway, get but to you point. ain't going to get, you ain't gonna, it's going to take a while for you to get to the big time. And if, if, and if the only thing you focus in on about being a writer is just to become rich and have a pretty woman, yeah. then you're in the wrong business, yeah. though. Yeah, you do it for the love of it. You. Yeah, go on, go on and break it down to him, Chris, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm still looking at the fact he called me the green giant, man. I'm not. <laughs> 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 but go ahead, Chris, yeah. break it down to, to Lance, man. Yeah, you, you do it for the love of it. And the money would come. It would come. But you, you only do it for the love of the passion. You have passion for it. It's not about the money. I mean, it comes with it, and it's good and all. Mm-hmm. But you just do it because you love doing it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what about this? Because as writers, and we all understand, this thing called rejection. Oh, yes. Right. The lovely responses <laughs> to the queries. You know? Thank you so much for inquiring with our company. But and, we ain't interested. No, and I'm over here. <laughs> Yeah, so how do you deal with rejection and the depression that can, you know, that can sometimes accompany the rejection that, you know, writers deal with? How do you deal with that, bro? Um, like Toby was saying, you get so many 
kickbacks, you know. And look, we made a file. We have a nice little <laughs> file on the thing of rejections. How many? But, yeah. Yeah, it's about an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> but we good now, but boy, but go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I mean, but you know, um the lady who wrote Harry Potter, she got rejected so many times. Yeah, J.K. Mm-hmm. Rowling. J.K. Mm-hmm. Now she's a billion now, you know. It just, you know, it it, it make you better. Mm-hmm. You know, to keep hearing people say no. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not something that you it it, it kind of make you break your spirit and like that. It make you a, a, a better writer. Mm-hmm. The better, you know, to get it out there. Because a lot of times, self-publishers do the best, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, as far as, like, book deals, or, um, you know, television deals, movie deals, whatever. Um, you know, so rejection is is good. It's, it's never a negative re- rejection, so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Chris, do you have plans for adapting your book into television or film? I do. Or animated I, adaptation? Or? I, I'm I'm having an I got an animation right now that mm-hmm. I emailed you guys on mm-hmm. YouTube yeah. uh, a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. So um, that's like a pilot almost. So I'm, I'm gonna try to present it to the to this company, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm try to get you know not try I'm, I'm gonna go out to like a Atlanta Art Institute mm-hmm. and get the students to do the characters. Mm-hmm. They get credit for you know. Yeah, yeah. and they Whatever. do a great job. We had a graduate of the Art Institute do some film work for us, and he did a great, great job. Shout yeah. out to Daria. Awesome, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, good stuff. All yeah. right, so let me ask you this, man. You know, obviously, you people are writing in and, and talking about you and wanting to know how they do this and how they do that. And a lot of, and I'm looking, I was looking at our Twitter feed. A lot of people are inspired by you, mm-hmm. and I just want to tell you that, just man to man, person to person. But what writers inspire you? Uh, Walter Mosley. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Walter Mosley. He's a, you know he's been doing it for years. And uh, uh, the movie that uh, Denzel and Don Cheetah done back in the day, mm-hmm. one of his books, um, was one of my favorites. You know, mm-hmm. so with Easy and and Mouse and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But you know, Walter Mosley is is a great writer. You know, so. Um, and it's good to almost develop your own style too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And like for me, I may listen to music and write. It's crazy, but uh, I have a screenplay called New York Streets, mm-hmm. and I would listen to old '80s music. Like it sounds crazy, but I would listen to something like, you know, Michael McDonald, yeah. Christopher mm-hmm. Cross. I may listen to uh, Lana Ritchie or something, or Michael, you know, Mike, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And and just picture a scene, you know, of the of the of what I want, mm-hmm. you know, as the I'm like a soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Like you you play a soundtrack in your head and you write it at the same time how That's you right. want this scene to come. Mm-hmm. So um, I have I'm not gonna say what how, what it's about, but uh, different things I go to go through and use for my uh, advantage. For it's, it's you know it's weird to some people you know you want quiet time, but me music helps. Yeah, and I agree 100% because Toby has seen, you know, and this is a, a good tip for any writers. If you're writing an action scene, mm-hmm. listen to aggressive music, mm-hmm. okay? You know, mm-hmm. if it's metal music or hardcore hip-hop, something that has a, a, a an edge to it right. because it puts you in that mode. And if you're writing one of those romantic scenes, mm-hmm. you know, you pull that, you know, Barry White. Yeah. Luke right. Fan drops right. Well, you know, you know it's like yeah. it's like going to the movies mm-hmm. when you watch something like The Fast and the Furious or mm-hmm. something like that with the high action scenes. You come out of there like, yeah, yeah. I can go hop in my car and you yeah. know go jump a bridge or something like right. that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> fight. But I'm glad that you use humor in your book because when you walked in and you're like, yeah, I got my book. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to read Harry Potter. This book is not thin, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is a book. This is a real book. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> of folks being out of work and a gentleman falling from grace as he was artificially implanted there in the first place. And now the real world has crashed upon him. Exactly. And it is an excellent read, ladies and gentlemen. And But I like the fact that he has that humor and yeah. it keeps you going. It keeps you laughing. Okay, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Because you got to laugh yeah. at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 laugh because I I remember working them work uh, those warehouse jobs and they give you like 
15 minutes for a break. Oh, my God. You know, and then yeah. you're trying to clock in and clock out. By the time you wait in line to clock, to out. clock out, right? you know, five minutes done went by. Right. And then you got to hurry up and run and come back. And meanwhile, the bosses are sitting upstairs looking at, at you. And looking at you like, uh-huh. uh-huh. Looking at your watch. Right. Like, uh, you going to clock back in? Right. Come on. Well, I had to wait to get my McDonald's. No, no. <laughs> they won't hear that. One minute late, uh, you can go home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so how... Can people reach you, brother? You know, what's the website, the phone numbers? <clears throat> How can they reach you, man? Uh, the website is www.outofworkbook.org. Uh-huh. And you can find uh, my Twitter and my fa- Facebook page on there. Cool. Okay. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right. Now, Night Storm Nation, you know, we've been talking about a lot of deep, deep, deep stuff, you know, from the past of the Joan Rivers and also this is the um, – 9/11, anniversary the anniversary of 9/11, mm-hmm. on September 11th, and we've been talking about how you can get also get started with writing books, but also the depression and the rejection and a whole bunch of bad stuff that comes. But there's one word that tends to overshadow a whole mess of negativity, and that one word is love. love. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is the love shout out segment of our show where the Night Storm Nation members get to send out their love to folks, and we say it live on the air. But with the whole Night Storm Nation, from looking at the tweets, got something they want to say. What they got to say to Chris? Right, today? all of Night Storm Nation, the ones that aren't, you know, at work, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> are the ones that are to be on the break right now. They're all sending a very special love out shout out to you, Chris. Mm-hmm. They're well, saying they love it. the fact that you're out here and you're doing your thing and they want to hear more from you and they definitely want to go on your website, like you said, to get in touch with him, www.outofworkbook.org. Go and check it out. And Chris, is there anybody you'd like to send a love shout out to? Uh, My mom. Mm-hmm. My mom, who supported me through all this, you know, uh, out of work thing when I was, you know, she's, you know, it's it's crazy when you, when you out of work and you 35. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's different. And your mom helping you out. It's not a good feeling. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good to have support, but it's not a good feeling to really know that you 35. Yeah. And something got to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So her, um, you know, my, my father passed back in 91. So she's been my, been there. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. um, and my uncle birthdays today. Oh, happy birthday. And my grandma, my grandma who passed, mm-hmm. um, in, uh, I think three years ago, her birthday today as well. So, um, so my aunt Virginia and my uncle Steve. So good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. And I want to send my love shout out, of course, to the fabulous YG. Who me? Who you? Who me? Black Hulk. Oh, <laughs> I had to put it in. I had <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh-huh. but 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 those big arms hold the family together, and we appreciate it, sir. Okay, <laughs> I send my love shout out back to you, my queen. You better have more feeling my feeling than that. Okay. Hi, I'm gonna send my love shout out to you, my queen, my know, baby. Right? Don't be telling me like Craig, uh, mama. And I'm <laughs> yeah, okay, baby. <laughs> I love you, girl. <laughs> and a special love <laughs> shout out to our children who keep calling the dog on radio station while we own the air. No, why is your school you. calling me? Man, what come is on. going on? Stop all We're this drama. On we need a silver air. lining, man. We need for dog. See, Night nice Star Nation, when we say we are you. <laughs> We're working, and the school is calling. We know your pain. <laughs> anyway, let's keep it going, baby. All right. Thank you, Night Store Nation listeners. And if you want us to sing your love shout-out to this someone special on the air, send us a message on Night Storm Radio mm-hmm. on Facebook, Night Storm Radio at Twitter, and NightStorm.com. Remember, that's in Y-G-H-T-S-T-O-R-M. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we will make sure that they know you're thinking about them. We also want to thank our Night Storm Nation members who sent in their letters, Paul, Lindsay, and Lance, uh-huh. for all your wonderful tips, tidbits, and... Uh, yeah, Lindsay, we're going to have to work on that, sweetheart. But And a big thank you to our esteemed guest today, Chris Henry. Yeah, now, Night Storm Nation, you know we have to end with the We Are Night Storm Nation. And, Jared, if you can roll that outro music. 
Go ahead, baby. Stepping out of darkness and into the light, we are here together in the combined power of individuals who dare to be above the status quo to initiate change. Regardless of our inadequacies or the mistakes that lie in our past, we make the difference of success over failure within our families, our businesses, and our communities. We come together as one body, Uh one soul, Uh and one mind, spreading the fruitfulness of truth and empathy to those that need it most. May we all be blessed in our journey as we scatter across the globe, bringing the killing power of love until we see each other again. I love me. Yes. I love you. Uh Uh-huh. And we will change the world. We are Nightstorm Nation. And And we we are you. you. God bless you. Have a great week.